I got online this morning and saw that Theo has made a video about Raycast. I'm not gonna lie, that's something that we've been wanting him to do for a while, obviously with the reach that he has. I know a lot of people have made videos about Raycast, plenty of different creators. And so for a while now, it's been on my mind to start making some reaction videos to maybe, you know, just share my opinion or maybe show how things can be done differently or even sometimes burst some sort of incorrect assumptions. Let's see what Theo has to say about Raycast. All right, so we know it can't be that bad because the title is already a banger. So let's uh, click play. A few months ago, I did a video discussing the tools that I've been using all of the time. But there's one in particular that doesn't fit in a video like that. It's a tool that deserves its own dedicated, focused discussion because honestly, I wasn't using it right, if really at all, before. That tool is Raycast. Sorry, quick little pause here already. When he says he's not using it right, I kind of love that he said that. Often people see Raycast as this super complex tool and they think they're not using it right, when in reality, you can't really go wrong. Raycast is a replacement for Spotlight. You know, the thing you get when you press Command Space on a Mac. Usually what this is used for is to open an app quickly. So if I wanted to open Affinity Photo, which is the thing I use for editing my photos, I do that and it opens. This is a great way to think about it as well, that you can start using Raycast just as an app launcher, which is what he's just shown here. You can then start using it more and more with time as you get more comfortable with it. The calculator is my favorite way to do math by a lot. In here, I can just type things like 1821 plus three or four, I missed the key. I can press enter, now it's on my clipboard. I can press this again and I'm back where I was. It's saved in the history, so I can go up and down to get to historical values. It'll even so or search when I start typing and only show ones that match the values I'm typing. It's so good. It's such a weirdly convenient way to do math quick. The calculator is usually the first thing that most people start to use. And here he's kind of shown a very basic usage of the calculator, which is just doing some sort of simple math operations. But the cool thing about the Raycast calculator is that it can also convert across various different units and date, time. For example, if I just open my Raycast here, let me move it up a little bit. You can see that I could do say uh, 75F for Fahrenheit and it immediately converts to Celsius. I don't even have to sort of finish typing that in. Or I can do say $50 and it knows I'm in Europe, so already converts to euros straight away. Or you can do things like time in San Francisco, and it tells you what time it is in San Francisco. You can even do time in San Francisco plus seven hours, and then it will tell you that time in, in seven hours. The calculator is definitely a core feature of Raycast, and when you start using it, you realize how good it is. Very hard to, to go back to the Spotlight one. There's a lot more though. They have window layouts. I'm not using those yet because I'm still a, a rectangle guy. I'm sure I have it open somewhere here. Yeah, rectangle. Rectangle is a modern spectacle. What it's for is doing this quick. If I want to take these two things I have open, like my Notion and my browser, I have hotkeys to just do splits, make them wider, smaller, whatnot. Convenient, but that's a separate app. Theoretically, I could do that in Raycast as well. Yep, that's true. You could. Um, now. Just a small kind of correction here, it's a small one, but window layouts and window management commands are kind of slightly different things. So the way that he showed rectangle here is basically just using window management commands where you can open up Raycast and go left half or right half, type that properly, right half or full screen and stuff like this. I think we have over 55 different window management commands and I've done a bunch of videos about it. Now, window layout uh, is a bit different. It's basically the idea that you can create a group of uh, apps and windows in the, and you can choose where to position them and how, how big you want them to be, what offset you want them to be. And you can create this layout, give it a name, and then you can very quickly just activate this layout and all of the apps that you put in here will automatically open and appear where you want them to. You know, I've got this window, this coding window layout, and when I press that, it basically opens up the browser and VS Code and stuff the way I like it. And if I go to edit it, just to show you, it's called coding, 
and I've got two apps. I've got Arc on the left and VS Code on the right, which is how I usually have it when I'm coding. Not on the laptop screen, because it's a bit small, but on my uh, main monitor over there. Using that, but again, you can use what you want and not what you don't want. And I've been amazed at how many of these things there are. You can use what you want, not what you don't want. That's very poetic. This is a small one, but I love it. I can move it. It shows you the grid lines for where you probably want to have it. But if I want to move this out of the way because I'm doing some math or something, oh, it's so convenient to be able to just quickly move this window. I am surprised how often I do that. I usually keep it like here, but I move it all the time. It's really convenient. It's a simple thing, you no, know, being able to move it. And I think being able to move it is fine. I feel like most launchers would have that, but the guidelines are very cool because as you get closer to the guides, they sort of snap into place and it just kind of feels great, almost like a haptic feedback, if you will. You can also use the reset Raycast window position command and that puts Raycast back in its original place. I set up hotkeys for all of my most used apps. So Arc, my browser, is control one. Arm cord, which is my Discord fork, is control five. Cursor is control three. My terminal ghost is in here, it's control two. I already have caps lock rebound to control. So now I hold down caps lock, I press one, and my browser. I press three, and I'm in my editor. No more command tab and hoping I get to the right app in the right amount of time. No more context shifting and all those. Yeah, so this is, again, one of the core features of Raycast, which is the idea of adding hotkeys to commands. Now, everything in Raycast is a command. A command can be launching an app. In his case, he maps these hotkeys to applications. But it can be for anything. It can be for anything that's a command in Raycast. For example, the uh, pause uh, command for Spotify. It just pauses whatever you're listening to, right? So you can add a hotkey to this, and whenever you want to pause it, you just press your hotkey. Hotkeys are definitely something that I feel like you need to slowly start using them until they become muscle memory. And he, I see that he's got them assigned to like numerical order, which if it works for him, that's perfect. I find that a little bit sort of like hard to memorize. So in my case, I kind of use the first letter of the app. So if I do like option B, you can see here that I'm toggling the browser. So option B, B for browser. And I have things like option D for the downloads folder. But we haven't even gotten into the extensions, which are one of the most fun parts. I'll show a personal favorite first, SVGL. I have an affinity project. Let's say I'm making a thumbnail for this video. Command space, SVG, enter. Now I can look up SVGs for all sorts of common things. Let's say I want one. Do they have one for Raycast? They do. I press enter. Now it's on my clipboard. Of course. Now I paste. Now I have their SVG. Look at that. Do you know how yeah, convenient that is? So command space. SVG, enter, TypeScripts, enter, on my clipboard, back to work. It's like five to 20 steps are now down to two. It's so good. I love how the range is five to 20. It's like such a big range. But overall, this is so true. By using Raycast to get the logo, you've just completely stayed in the same flow that you were before. That's like the key of Raycast is that it reduces the amount of context switching. In his case, he's five to 20 steps, meaning having to go to the browser, typing in a URL, search for the logo, etc. Without even saying like the danger of going to the browser, right? Because the moment you open up the browser, like you have no idea what's gonna be there waiting for you, trying to catch your attention. Is it a Twitter? Little favicon has changed to let you know that you have notifications. WhatsApp message, whatever it is in the browser, it's, it's, it's a black hole. So if you can avoid going to the browser and you can do things by skipping that entire process, you stay in the flow, you reduce context switching, and obviously you increase your productivity. And I think that's like the main thing that Raycast helps you with. And another thing, I've got this extension as well. I use it all the time. And the cool thing is that in his case, you can see that he's copying the SVG to uh, his uh, affinity program. But what you can also do, you can do Command K, and here there's a bunch of other options. Like you can even copy the TSX component and paste it in your code base. So that's pretty cool. This is one of the things that I used to think macOS did better than others that I would argue it now does worse than others. If I want to type an emoji on macOS, I press the globe key, wait for it to slowly come up in hopes that it does, and then press the button 
wait way longer for it to go away and paste in the value. Yeah, man, the native one is so slow. I, I don't know how people use it. With Raycast, you open it, you start typing emoji, enter, and you pick the emoji you want. You can obviously search, so pray, enter, and it gets in immediately. But you might have noticed, this is one of my favorite subtle things with Raycast. When you bind a hotkey, it shows you it here in the name of the thing. So I'm typing search emoji, but you might have noticed I found a hotkey for it already. So all I have to do from here, command period, enter, and it's in. Another thing about the emoji picker while we're here, I have mine mapped to the sort of default macOS hotkey, which is control command space. But one thing that a lot of people don't know is that you can do a command K action on any emoji and you can sort of pin it. So emojis that you use very, very frequently, you can pin them. I don't because usually in the frequently used, they're usually there, but that's a helpful thing to know. Another thing is that if you search for emoji and do shift command S so you can edit that um, command, there's an option here called display size. And I have mine set to small and it looks like Fios has his at uh, the uh, medium size. But you can basically change it if you want it to be smaller or bigger. So now they've changed it to large, you can see that they're much larger. You can also bind custom names for things too when you search them here. So I have a calendar that I use called Notion Calendar. The nice. issue is that Notion Calendar used to be named Cron. And if I type in Notion Calendar, or I just type in Notion, normal Notion comes up first. So two things. What he's talking about there is called alias. So it's true, you can set an alias to any command that you want, any. And he set Cron to Notion Calendar because of his muscle memory, which is funny. I've got the exact same one. And you also see that I have a hotkey, which is option C, so C for calendar. If you wanna add an alias, you just look for whatever command that you want. You do again, shift command S, and then here in the alias column, you just type in the alias that you want. It's as simple as that. And I'm just scratching the surface. If I take yep, this true. picture, let's say I have this on my clipboard. I say command C, it's on my clipboard. I wanna send it to somebody. Space, upload from clipboard, Command, enter, now I have it here. I can press enter, open in browser, command enter to put it on my clipboard, and now I have a URL to a file that I had on my clipboard. That's very cool. I've seen his upload thing, but I've never used it. But now that I saw him setting it up, it's quite easy, quite straightforward and super convenient. I've got a few issues with the extension from what I can see. Like you can see that he got a little bit confused with the whole sort of like you know, launching the command and it not working, having to go back to the clipboard history and copy it again. So that's a little bit clunky. I feel like for an extension like this, there should be a command which is upload selected files. So you don't have to kind of copy them. There's no need to copy them. You can just open up Finder, say, you know, in my case, I'm gonna open up downloads, select some files, then launch Raycast, type in upload, and it uses the selected files and uploads them. So. If anybody's watching this, or Theo, if you're watching this, or Igor, someone on your team, and you wanna improve that extension, you need some help, hit me up, I can help you out. But that should be very straightforward to do anyway. One of my favorite things that I haven't seen in other similar solutions is the ability to just write a bash script, pass parameters here, and now import this bash script as an extension in Raycast. This is one that I really wanted. You might notice I have my top bar here. You probably don't see them in my videos a lot. The reason to do this, I type in toggle, press enter, and now my top bar is hidden. The reason that works is because a very kind developer, Squark P here, took the time to write me that bash script and make it work with Raycast. That's cool. I think it's just important to differentiate a couple of things here. So this is a Raycast script. As you can see, it's written in this uh, bash sort of um, shell file. It's great. You can do so many things with it. And then there are there are Raycast extensions, which uses a Re React API. So they're quite different. Basically, it started off as scripts, and then we found there was some limitations and there were things that we wanted to do that you just couldn't really author it in a nice way through Bash. So then we created a React API layer that allows you to kind of tap into the Raycast window and the UI in a much easier way. I actually have one as an extension. So I've got here toggle menu bar. So this does the exact same thing. I can toggle it whenever I want. And if you toggle it a lot, you can add a hotkey to it. So this one is actually in the store. Is there a link to the store here? No. 
But if we search for store menu bar, then there is a toggle menu bar extension. So if you're watching this and you want the same functionality without having to create a script, you can just go to the store and install it from there. The Raycast Wrapped. Mm. They actually took the time to build something similar to the whole like Spotify Wrapped experience you've probably seen all over the internet. But for my Raycast usage. Oh wow, he installed it 672 days ago. That's, uh, that's quite a while ago. I don't remember seeing Theo sort of talking about Raycast for that long. So maybe he installed it, sort of left it there and then slowly started using it more and more. I've been super happy with Raycast since I started using it. It took me a while to start using all the features, but you can see I've made progress this last year. And at this point, I don't think I could use my Mac without it. It's become essential software. Yeah, that's great, man. That was really cool to see. I agree with a lot of the comments that he made about context switching, slowly adopting more and more of it and not being able to use your Mac without it. Like just a few weeks ago, I had to change the screen of this laptop. And so I had a backup one and I was just lost. Like all of the things that I normally do, my hotkeys, my window management, it was all gone. And you kind of realize how much, you know, once you start using Raycast, how much you rely on it to do things quickly. But it was cool to see, thanks for making this video. I don't think he's necessarily taking us through everything he does with Raycast. I assume this might be just the um, sort of top things. I've made so many of these videos with our What's In My Raycast playlist that it's impossible to show everything. And in a way, doing this reaction video here, even though it's quite async, it does feel like a What's In My Raycast as well. But anyway, the point I wanna make is that there's a bunch of stuff that I don't see Theo using. Maybe he does use it, maybe he doesn't, but there are some things like clipboard history, like that is a must, I use that a million times a day. Uh, obviously window management as we saw. He doesn't seem to be using any of the AI commands, so quick AI, AI chat or AI, or AI commands. And so I wonder if um, he hasn't sort of taken the time to get used to them yet, or he just doesn't need them. So anyway, I'll reach out and see. But there's also things like quick, quick links, snippets, there's so much. Let me have a look at the comments real quick before we before we bounce. There he is. Yeah, mate, that's me. The number one feature of Raycast that Theo didn't mention is clip. Yeah, clipboard manager. Basically clipboard history. Yeah, completely agree. This is, oh, he replied to it. I should use this more. Well, for your own sake, even in the video I saw you having to go back to Finder a few times to copy that image that you wanted to upload. So that would have been in your clipboard history. Sometimes I forget my Mac didn't come with Raycast. It's become such an important and substantial part of my workflow. Yeah, that's nice to see as well. Yeah, we have presets for window management. So if you are using Rectangle, if you go to like, say, window management, let me just go to this one. Uh, if you go to the preferences, window management, you see that there are some presets. So if you are coming from Rectangle's Spectacle, and you're using their default shortcuts, then you can just pick one of these presets and it's gonna work the exact same way. So that's a very easy migration. Yeah, con convert units like 15, yeah, that's cool. Unit conversion, currency conversion, that's nice. So good. Oh, that's cool. Very nice comments as well. So yeah, that was cool. Anyway, that's all there is to it. Thank you.